They've been fighting with each other, just, you know, the Greeks and the Romans, and, and, they, and that's why they have all these antibiotics in them, right? Because they've got to fight everything else off, all right? The thing is, is that, so that's where we've got all those antibiotics that came from nature, all from soil microorganisms. But the problem is, is that when you take a, a scoop of soil and you throw it on a petri dish, only 1% of the bacteria will grow. 99% of them are being considered unculturable, all right? And so this guy named, at Northwest University named Kim Lewis, they, take, they took soil samples and they, 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 they kind of got the bacteria out of them and they put them into these little tiny holders uh, with membranes and then they sealed them up and they put them back in the ground and they grew the bacteria inside these little holders. And by doing this and processing them, they could eventually get 50% of them to grow in culture that would have never grown before. And then they screened 10,000 of these and they got, they got some really good hits, but they got this one hit called Tixobactin. And this is the structure here, all right? And this Tixobactin um, has great gram-positive spectrum of activity, the results I show here from their paper. And it's, um, it's, it's not toxic in mice, and it's probably like really going through s some of the clinical trial stages pr pretty soon. And the way it works is it binds to lipid too. One of those lipids in that saw wall pathway clumps onto that, like vancomycin does the DL to DL, but it grabs onto lipid too, and it sequesters it. And then that is what's giving it. So this kind of opens the door to potentially finding a whole bunch of new antibacterial agents. But it's going to be really important that for any new agents we get now, we have to really be careful about how we use them because the reason everything got resistant to the old antibiotics is because we really abused them and uh, we can't afford to do that again. Um, next slide. Oh dear, next slide. Ah, okay. <clears throat> okay, so I have, I've had a lot of collaborators and I've listed them here and I've had some really good postdocs and I've had several students. And this is Herica. Uh, she's graduating and going to Harvard in May to run a mass spec facility for a big cancer research group. And I hate to say it, but she's gonna be making more money starting than I am making now. <laughs> you know? So like learning this kind of advanced technology stuff can really pay off for you. So, um, and uh, these are my current graduate students. And I'm currently supported by uh, an NIH grant, this R21 AI, uh, uh, 121903 and um, so thank you for your time. Those are metabolized possibilities. Do you look at any of those as possible flow drugs in of themselves? Um, yeah, that's a possibility, yeah, we are. But actually, the NCI library's got a lot of toxins in them. So, like, I didn't point these out, but some of those are like streptonigrin. So, the methyl ester of streptonigrin is in there. And it's just a, you know, a lot of them are just generic toxins. I'm not sure why they were screening them, it had them in the NCI library. But some of them are real interesting. But uh, yes, we're looking at them. But the FDA library is going to be the real big one. Oh, wow. We should have been eating, actually. Sorry. Okay, um, any other questions? Anybody else? I have to build some more questions later. Yeah. Yes, later. Okay. We can talk during your dinner time or talk to him after the dinner's over. Yeah. I'm going to get Great. some gin. I'm going to get some. Oh, for some reason I thought. The dinner is cold. Can you, can you get like a cut of the action card or something from a graduate student when they leave? I know. I'm like, well, it was. For, uh, it's really great for her. You know, she's yeah. like. I'm,